Students, I promised you a video on your test corrections, and this is the first test that you had of aromaticity. So I'm going to do this in two parts. In the first part, I'm going to show you how to tackle the MCQ questions. There's seven questions of those, and maybe in the second part, or maybe it might even go into a third part, I'll show you how to tackle some of the written questions. Right, so let's start. start. So the first question for the MCQ is which of the following compounds would not undergo, and I think not is a very important word, undergo a Friedel-Crafts alkylation reaction. And recall that we spoke about Friedel-Crafts alkylation reactions in class, and the Friedel-Crafts alkylation reaction is normally an alkyl chloride together with a catalyst like aluminum chloride, and you would be able to put a alkyl group onto a benzene ring. <clears throat> the important thing about this reaction is that this is not a, uh, a fast reaction, in fact it is a very slow reaction that doesn't occur too well, so you would, it works best with an activating group. Um, so anything that's activating here would work best, and anything that's strongly deactivating or even moderately deactivating uh, would cause a Friedel Krauss reaction not to occur. So if I look at my substituents, ethoxybenzene with the ethoxy group, this is an activating group, so that would allow the reaction to occur. Um, acetophenone with that group on the benzene ring, this, as you would know, is moderately deactivating. So it's looking likely to be B at the moment, but let's look at the others uh, before we make our choice. Ethyl benzene has an activating group. This is weakly uh, or moderately activating. Uh, and this fluoro group that you find here is a deactivating group. And this deactivating group uh, would not uh, make the reaction go well but it might just occur. So if I had to choose between these two deactivating groups, this is weakly deactivating, and that's moderately deactivating. So a reaction could probably occur there, but not there. So the answer for this would be B. <coughs> In the next question, we say, which of the following aromatic molecules as an ortho-directing substitute. And here I just want to see whether you know which of your substituents are ortho-paradirecting and which are meta-directing. Um, so I look at chloro, nitro for B, or benzoic acid, um, and an acetophenone group. So all these groups that you find here are groups that we can put onto benzene, but they affect the activity of your reactivity of the ring. Chlorine is deactivating, as is nitro, also deactivating, and the carboxylic acid deactivating. This acetophenone is also deactivating. And remember, all deactivating groups are all meta directors with the exception of the halogens. So your halogens are deactivating, but they are also para directing. And of all of these here, the only halogen is chloro, so the answer is A. The next question says, which of the following statements about sulfonation of benzene is correct? So if you're looking at sulfonation of benzene, you're looking at this particular reaction. Where you have a sulfonic acid group here. And that normally comes about via 
an electrophile. So the pi electrons here attack these, this electrophile and you end up with your benzene sulfonic acid. So the question says which of the following statements about ben the sulfonation of benzene is correct? The aromatic ring functions as the electrophile. We know that's not correct. Right? It's not correct. We're looking for the correct one because the aromatic ring is not the electrophile. The sulfonate group here is the electrophile. The rate determining step is attack of the pi electrons on benzene on the electrophile. That could possibly be a, a correct statement because we know that in the mechanism what happens is the pi electrons go out and attack this cation of the sulfur cation here to form a benzene sulfonic acid. So that's probably correct. The next one, aromaticity is regained by loss of a hydride ion. This is a tricky one and it's tricky because what normally happens in this intermediate step is that a base removes a proton here and you form your aromatic ring again. Uh, so that happens in the mechanism. If you look at your question very carefully, it says aromatic aromaticity is regained by loss of a hydride ion. And the hydride ion is actually H minus. And you losing an H plus ion. So what you note is that although it may seem on the face of it true, the ion that's lost is different. This is referring to this, but you're actually losing that. So this statement is incorrect. And the next thing says that a carb anion intermediate is produced in the mechanism. And if you look at your mechanism, we produce a carbocation intermediate and not a carb anion intermediate. So this is not correct and the answer would probably be B. The next question 1.4 says one of the statements below is true about a fetal cross alkylation of benzene using N-butyl chloride. And if we look at the fetal cross alkylation of benzene using N-butyl chloride, and let's just write the structure of N-butyl chloride down. Let's see what we know about this fetal cross reaction before we even start to, to look at us answering the question. In this particular reaction, uh, in fact I made a mistake here, there's one more CH2, so CH2 in, in butyl, one, two, three, four, uh, so I'm just going to write this like this, we'll see why in a second, one, two, three, four, so I know I was going to initially. I'm just going to draw that again. So in this carbocat ion here, I can get rearrangement. So I can get a hydride ion migrating to this carbocat ion. But if I get a hydride ion migrating to that carbocat ion, what I see is that I now have a secondary carbocation from a initially we had a primary carbocation. I remember that if there are two hydrogens on the carbon, it's a primary carbocation. If there's one hydrogen on a carbon, then it's a secondary carbocation. 
if there's no hydrogens on the carbon, then it's a tertiary carbocation, something like this. And in order of stability, because of hyperconjugation, there's more groups that can donate electrons toward the an NTP orbital in the carbon atom um, through a sigma bond, and that's hyperconjugation. So the hyperconjugation is better here in a tertiary carbocation than a secondary than a primary. So this is more stable, that's uh, not as stable as a tertiary, and that's the least stable. Right, so the question says, one of the statements below is true about fetal craft's alkylation of benzene using n butyl chloride. Let's see what's the most appropriate answer. So the first one says a rearranged alkylated product will be the major product. That's a possibility because the rearranged product is more stable. So that's a possibility. Iron chloride acts as a catalyst in the reaction. This reaction occurs with a catalyst, right? Uh, a chloride catalyst, but not iron cl a chloride. A catalyst in this reaction is aluminium chloride. So, um, this is probably not the, the best answer. C, the reaction proceeds at a very fast rate, and we know that um, these real cross reactions are not fast reactions. In fact, they're very slow reactions. So it's probably not that, not that true. The product of the reaction will be in butyl benzene. As we've seen, you get a rearranged product, so it's not going to be in butyl benzene. It's going to be in a form of isobutyl benzene. So that's probably not correct as well. So the most correct option here is The next question says, a methoxy group is strongly activating toward electrophilic aromatic substitution due to. So it tells you about the methoxy group, and we know that your methoxy group is strongly activating, and they want to know why. I'm just going to draw in the margin here, methoxy benzene, and let's see what happens in methoxy benzene. And in methoxybenzene, we know that the lone pair of electrons can be donated toward the ring by resonance in that fashion. Uh, creating a more electron dense aromatic ring, which makes it a better nu uh, nuclear file to go out and seek the electrophile. So let's see some of the options here. The option A is delocalization of electrons by the overlap of the electrons from a sigma bond orbital with an MTP orbital. We know that overlap of electrons from a sigma bond orbital with an MTP orbital occurs in hyperconjugation. But that occurs not by delocalization, but more by donation through a sigma bond. So there's things wrong with this statement here. And also it doesn't depict what I've shown uh, here in the margin. So probably not that. Delocalization of electrons through the lone pair on oxygen, and that's a lone pair on oxygen, of this methoxy group with the pi electrons in the benzene ring. That's exactly what I've shown here. So that could be an option, but let's see what the others say. Hyperconjugation. Hyperconjugation is exactly what I've described, but it's donation of electrons. So if I look at the next one, it's donation of electrons to the MTP orbital through sigma bonds from the methoxy group. And that's just what I described about hyperconjugation. So these two here link to hyperconjugation. And that's not why this methoxy group activates the aromatic ring. It's actually the reason why methyl groups and alkyl groups activate the aromatic ring. So that's wrong, that's wrong. And the answer is probably B. Next question says, one of the following statements is not a criterion for aromaticity. So let's see what we know about, it says not a criterion. Let's see what are all the criteria that we can list before we even start looking at here. 
let's see what we know about aromaticity. Uh, criteria for aromaticity it must have 4n plus 2 pi electrons, that's Huckel's rule. Um, we know that the molecule must be planar, uh, the molecule must be cyclic, um, and we also know that every atom in the molecule must have a p orbital. Okay, so those are some of the criteria that we can list for aromaticity. Let's go to our options. The molecule must have 4n plus 2 pi electrons. That's this uh, statement here, so that's probably correct. All the carbon atoms in the molecule must be sp2 hybridized. In order to be planar, this must be true. The molecule must be cyclic. The molecule must be cyclic in order to uh, be aromatic, it must have an uninterrupted um, ring structure, uh, and that's why the molecule must be uh, cyclic. And the molecule must not have oxygen or nitrogen in its structure. We know that there's no criteria talking about the heteroatoms, and in fact, we know that molecules such as um, If I have a molecule such as furan, furan, you know, is aromatic. Right? It's got two, four, one lone pair of this is in the p orbital that can be shared, and the other lone pair is uh, pointing in this direction, uh, with in the same direction as the other um, bonding orbitals. So these two electrons from that p orbital can be de delocalized with these other. 4 pi electrons here, and that's 6 pi electrons, so furan is aromatic. The same can be seen for pyro, where these lone pair of electrons is in the p orbital, which can be delocalized with these other 4 electrons, and this is also aromatic. So, this criteria of aromaticity is not correct, right? must not have oxygen or nitrogen in its structure. So which statement is not correct? It's probably that one. And the last question that we have talks about styrene is regarded as having and you see I've shown you here that styrene can um, donate electrons out of the ring in this fashion. So these electrons go toward this carbon atom, creating a carbocation here and a carbon ion at this position. So donating electrons away from the aromatic ring, which would make it deactivating, but it can also donate electrons into the aromatic ring. Those that double bond can go there that can go there, and you can get a carb anion at this position, and a carbocation here, which would mean that this would make it activating. And we find experimentally that this reaction occurs, and it's more activating than deactivating. So this is more activating, so it's a weakly activating group because electrons can be donated both into and out of the aromatic resonance. So that's for the multiple choice part of the test, and I'll make a follow-up video which shows you um, a little bit about the written part.